Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Burnt Bass Cheesecake. That's right, have you ever made a cheesecake and while you were eating it you were thinking, this is good, but I wonder how much better it would be if I did everything wrong. Well, my friends, this bass style cheesecake is the answer to that question. And by the way, we're finally doing a trendy recipe while it's actually still trendy. So you may have heard about this and seen pictures on social media. And as much as I hate to admit it, all that hype is worth it, as this really was fantastic. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our pan. And for that, we're going to use some parchment paper and butter. And the first thing we'll do is spread the inside of our pan with a generous amount of soft butter, unsalted, and preferably grass-fed. And then what we'll do once our pan has been thoroughly greased is do the exact same thing to a large round piece of parchment paper. And we'll want to make sure we spread that all the way out, almost if not all the way to the edge. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and press that paper in, butter side up. And what's going to happen is the butter in the pan is going to help it adhere. And as we do this, we're trying to accomplish two things. All right, we want to get that paper smoothed out as flat as we can on the bottom, with no major bubbles or bumps. And we also want to make sure it's pressed very flat against the sides, without any huge creases. All right, lots of small creases are fine, but we want to try to avoid large folds into which the batter might flow. And by the way, the alternative method for this would be to cut a round piece for the bottom, and then cut one long band that goes around the side, like you would for a springform cheesecake pan. But to me, this is easier, and apparently more authentic. Anyway, both methods would work, so you decide. I mean, you guys are for all the Basques of your parchment-related tasks. And then once that's set, what I like to do is take some scissors and sort of trim away some of the excess paper if a few spots seem to have more than the others. And that's just not so it looks more uniform. I think that ensures we'll have a more even browning. And by browning, of course, I mean burning. But having said that, don't trim too much. We definitely want to have an inch or two of paper left. And then what we'll do once our pan is prepped is set that aside and move on to this ultra-simple cheesecake batter which is going to start with some very soft room temperature cream cheese. And I'm not kidding this time. For this recipe to work out, it should be soft and spreadable. And then to our cream cheese, we will add a little touch of sugar, as well as a generous pinch of salt, followed by some all-purpose flour, which according to the recipe is supposed to be sifted in at the end. But I figured, hey, since we're doing everything wrong, let's do that wrong too. And not to spoil the ending, but it worked. But anyway, once all that's together, we will take a spatula or wooden spoon, and we'll stir and smear this together until it's very, very, very smooth and creamy. And if our cheese is nice and soft, this is going to happen very quickly. All right, one of the longest running jokes on Food Wishes is me forgetting to take out the cream cheese, and then I try to mix it in when it's all hard and stiff. And it takes forever, and it's really annoying to do. And by the end, I'm making up new curse words. But like I said, this time I did remember. So this really was a pleasure to cream, and it only took a couple minutes. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is switch from a spatula to a whisk and we will start adding our wet ingredients, beginning with a little bit of pure real vanilla extract, followed by the first of four eggs, which by the way, like everything else in this recipe, should be at room temperature. So we will go ahead and whisk in the first one. And once that's been completely incorporated, we will add the second. And the reason we're doing these one at a time is because these have to emulsify to keep the batter nice and smooth. And if we dumped those all in at once and started whisking, the mixture would separate and we would have a big ugly mess on our hands. So while we are doing lots of things intentionally wrong with this recipe, there are certain techniques that must be followed and adding the eggs one at a time here is one of them. Which reminds me, of course you can use your electric mixer for this. But as you know, my philosophy is if we ever can make a recipe all by hand, that's how we should do it. Especially for a dessert. Since the amount of calories you burn stirring all this together are exactly the same as a slice of cheesecake. I assume. I mean, I've never actually crunched the numbers, but it has to be close. And then what we'll do once our eggs have been added is go ahead and stir in the last ingredient, which is some heavy cream. And we'll go ahead and stir that in until nicely incorporated. And that's it, once our batter's been mixed, we can go ahead and transfer this into our prepared pan. And then whenever we're doing a baked dessert like this and we've poured in a batter, we always want to stop for a second and step back and ask ourselves a very important question. Should I tap that? And this time the answer is yes. Because by giving it the old tap-a-tap -tap on the table, we're going to cause any of those larger unsightly bubbles to come to the top. At which point that's ready to transfer into the center of a very hot 400 degree oven for about 50 to 55 minutes. Or until it puffs up and gets very, very dark brown and the edges are borderline burnt. 
And then this is optional, but for the last 10 minutes, I like to raise the temp to 425, just to help achieve a little extra burntness. And after about 55 minutes total baking time, mine looked like this. Oh yeah, take that correctly made cheesecakes. So forget the water bath and the slow and low oven. We are going with direct violent intense heat. And even though it's very brown on the outside, the inside is still very, very, very soft. And when you shake it, which you really should, it's gonna look like this, and you're gonna think maybe it's not cooked, but it is. Because as it sits and cools and collapses, it will firm up to the perfect creamy texture. So we're just gonna let that sit cooling down to room temp, at which point we can carefully lift that out onto a plate and remove the paper. And if you used enough butter, that parchment should come away from the sides pretty easily. But if you need to give it a little help with a spatula or a knife, go ahead. Oh, and if you're thinking the depression that was formed when that cool would be great for holding fruit, I like how you're thinking. But anyway, the original is served plain, so that's what I'm going with. And then I find it's too hard to remove all the parchment. So what I like to do is just go around with a knife, and then we'll tear that away, leaving the parchment underneath, which is actually gonna make it a lot easier to transfer onto our final serving platter. Although we're not gonna do that yet, since this needs to be very cold before you serve it. Oh, by the way, if you taste a couple of these crumbs that come off of it, and they taste bitter, which they will, do not panic. That's actually the magic behind the burnt bass cheesecake. And we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, we'll go ahead and transfer that into the fridge until thoroughly chilled, at which point we can go ahead and transfer that onto a nice looking platter, or if you want, something like this. And that's it, our intentionally burnt, quote unquote, cheesecake is ready to enjoy. Oh, by the way, when you plate this up, don't forget you had parchment paper under there. All right, some of your more litigious guests might think that's a choking hazard. But anyway, we'll go ahead and serve that up sans paper. And that really was nothing short of magnificent. And one of the best cheesecakes I've ever eaten. And above and beyond the stunning appearance and amazing texture, the reason this tastes so good is the same reason creme brulee tastes good and cannelais tastes good. It's the combination of those bittersweet brown bits with the sweet, creamy, cheesy, lighter parts that is the real genius behind this recipe. Right, it's a proven scientific fact that a little bit of bitter makes things taste better, especially sweet things. So long story short, there was definitely a method to this madness. Oh, and I should mention I adapted the recipe and kind of scaled it down so it would fit in a cake pan, which I thought would make it a little more accessible, since I'm not sure exactly how many people have the giant springform pans. So the authentic version is actually taller than this. And because of that, you'll sometimes get like a little layer of custard in the middle, which is nice. But this was super nice too. And like I said, maybe a little easier to do. But anyway, that's it. My take on burnt bass cheesecake. To summarize, we disregarded every rule about cooking cheesecake and ended up with something that might even be better. So whether this is the first time you're seeing this or you've been drooling over online pictures for a while, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.